There is a theory that says chickens are the grandchildren of T-Rexes. Yes, I'm talking about the extinct gigantic monsters that lived on Earth millions of years ago. Well, scientists say that birds were actually living among the dinosaurs, but how come they're still alive? We are extended, and we will tell you why birds survived and dinosaurs went extinct after an asteroid hit Earth. Birds are the only dinosaurs left. That might seem strange. A pigeon or a penguin doesn't look much like a Tyrannosaurus, but the connection is still there all the way down to the bone. About 150 million years ago in the Jurassic, the first birds evolved from small feathery raptor-like dinosaurs becoming another branch on the dinosaur family tree. For more than 80 million years ago, birds of all sorts flourished from loon-like swimmers with teeth to beaked birds that carried streamer-like feathers as they flew. With hindsight, birds can be categorized as avian dinosaurs and all the other sorts, from Stegosaurus to Brontosaurus, are non-avian dinosaurs. The entire reason paleontologists make that split is because of the catastrophe that struck 66 million years ago. An asteroid more than 6 miles across struck what's now the Yucatan Peninsula, triggering the fifth mass extinction in the world's history. Some of the debris thrown into the atmosphere returned to Earth, the friction turning the air into an oven and sparking forest fires as it landed all over the world. Then the intensity of the heat pulse gave way to a prolonged impact winter. The sky I blotted out of my suit and ash as temperatures fell, all told. More than 75% of species known from the end of the Cretaceous period 66 million years ago didn't make it to the following Paleogene period. The geologic break between the two is called the KPG boundary and beaked birds were the only dinosaurs to survive the disaster. There has been a lot of discussion about what enabled modern type birds to survive the KPG extinction. While other birds groups, non-avian dinosaurs and even pterosaurus perished, says Royal BC Museum paleontologist Derek Larson. The end of the Cretaceous boasted an entire array of birds and bird-like reptiles. But of these groups, it was only the big birds that survived. The hamsters of evolution had given birds a lucky break. The key event set in motion long before the asteroid struck. All living birds have toothless beaks. But this wasn't always so. The very first bird, the 150 million year old Archaeopteryx, initially confounded 19th century naturalists because it had teeth. For tens of millions of years after the Archaeopteryx, toothed birds continued to thrive and evolve alongside their dinosaurian relatives, and some of these toothed birds eventually lost their teeth, plucking up their meals with toothless beaks instead. The question is what evolutionary pressure pushed birds to lose teeth when teeth seem so useful. Given that most birds fly, adaptation to the air seemed like a possibility. Older hypothesis focused on the idea of weight reduction for flight, says University of Texas at Austin paleontologist Grace Musser. But the discovery that some toothed birds were strong flyers has led researchers back to the drawing board. Rather than flight, food might have given birds an evolutionary notch towards toothless beaks as ancient avians thrived among the other dinosaurs. Paleontologists have noticed that some dinosaur groups, including birds, evolved beaks and lost teeth as they became more herbivorous, while the earliest birds had teeth to nab insects and other small morsels. Some birds' lineages started to specialize on fruit, seeds, and other plant foods. Instead of teeth to catch, the birds evolved beaks to pluck and pick. Among the birds that began to lose teeth in favor of beaks, the way beaks formed during the development may have helped the evolutionary shift. Changes to the skull and face, as the beak became more complex, may have moved developing tissues around, changing how they interact in the embryo, and resulted in the loss of tooth formation, says King's College London anatomist Abigail Tucker. All the things that make birds birds were already in place. Well before the mass extinction, says University College London anatomist Ryan Felis. 
When the extinction struck, the traits birds had been evolving for millions of years made the difference between life and death. While some birds survived the impact and its aftermath, not all of them did. When we think about hypotheses of traits that let birds survive, we need to take into account that it was only small silver of diversity that made it to the other side, Felix says. Entire groups of birds, such as tooth beaks called Enantheornithes, went extinct. It's unlikely that one single trait determined the fate of all these species. Still survive an extinction often comes down to luck, and beaks might have been some bird's ace. By the end of the Cretaceous, beaked birds were already eaten much more varied diet than their toothed relatives. These birds weren't specialized on insects or other animal food, and so they were able to pluck up hard food items like seeds and nuts. And in the aftermath of the extinction, when animal life was severely cut back, those hard, persistent little morsels got beaked birds through the hard times. Beaked birds were able to feed on the seeds of the destroyed forest and wait out the decades until vegetation became to return. Both fossils and the timeline of birds' evolution discerned from their genetic relationships indicates that early members of modern birds' groups, such as birds related to ducks, parrots, and chickens, were around by the time the asteroids struck. These groups still suffered losses, but enough survived to set up a new pulse of bird evolution in the millions of years following the catastrophe. Many bird lineages became smaller in size, while maintaining their brain size. Throughout evolutionary shrinking, birds wound up with larger brains compared to their body size, setting up the stage for avian intelligence beyond what the non-avian dinosaurs could have evolved. But big evolutionary changes often come with constraints. The loss of teeth does limit the number of dietary niches birds could explore, Felix says. Herbivorous mammals and non-avian dinosaurs evolved ever-growing teeth so that could continue eating as the plants wore their teeth down. But this just isn't possible with a beak, Felix says. And that means that bird skulls haven't needed to vary as much to support different jaws and ways of eating, meaning that birds look like evolutionary slowpokes compared to non-avian dinosaurs, as Felix and colleagues found in the new study of birds skull evolution. To understand more about how birds manage to survive and make a living in a world recovering from one of the worst mass extinction of all time, the task at hand is to find more fossils from the time directly following the mass extinction. From a time called the Paleocene, paleontologists have some examples of fossil birds from about 10 million years after the disaster, from a time called Eocene. But bird fossils from the slice in between the Cretaceous and the Eocene are fragmentally and hard to find. These are the bones that may have revealed new secrets.